Hey guys, welcome to day four as we are diving into the Old Testament. I want to keep moving forward in the lineage of this story as we talk about the children of Israel and how they rejected God. The children of Israel are a direct representation of God's covenant with his people. This country was his country, and we see that a lot throughout Scripture as kind of establishing his kingdom. And at this time, in Exodus 9, 19, Moses has an encounter with God, and his last instructions to, to Moses on Mount Sinai can be found in Exodus 19, 6. And he says this, Now if you will obey me and keep my covenant, you will be my own special treasure from among all the peoples on the earth. For all the earth belongs to me. There's that authority piece. And you will be my kingdom priest, my holy nation. This is the message you must give to the people of Israel. So uh, we see this as a prophecy, as kind of a, a, pro a prophetic declaration, uh, again, in 1 Peter 2.9. So again, tying back the Old Testament and the kingdom and how Jesus reveals it, we see this in 1 Peter 2.9. It says, For you are my chosen people. You are a loyal priest, a holy nation, God's very own possession. And as a result, you can show others the goodness of God, for He called you out of darkness into His wonderful light. So there's always there's a connection here that we find in the New Testament. But in this story with Moses, we find that the people don't respond in the way that He would like. God was inviting His people to advance the kingdom on earth. This was, hey, if you trust me and under, fall under my authority, um, we will advance the kingdom on earth and demonstrate my role and my authority and operating in my blessing. But unfortunately, um, when Moses talks to these priests in this holy nation, uh, they don't respond in the way that he likes. The children of Israel, they miss it. Moses reveals God's desire for them to partner with him in his kingdom. But the spirit of fear sets into the, these people as they've seen Moses have this miraculous experience on Mount Sinai. It actually drives them away from God, from Israel and away from the relationship with God into a desire for rules and commands. They're, they want to settle for the commandments more than the relationship with God, and they abandon their kingly and priestly position. Fast forwarding a little bit, we see this in Samuel. Samuel is, is asked to step down as king. Uh, he goes to his people and they say, hey man, we think you're too old. Uh, your brothers don't really have great character, and so we actually want somebody else. And we want somebody else because everybody else has somebody else that is young, that will take us into battle, that will war with us. And so the people that were following Samuel during this time during Israel, in Israel, they were, they were looking around. They were seeking other things outside of God himself. And so Samuel goes to the Lord after he hears this, and he says, Lord, what do I tell them? And he said, they are not rejecting you, Samuel. They are rejecting me as a king. God saw himself as the king in the midst of his people, Developing a kingdom of priests on earth once again, but the Israelites had chosen the law, the world, over a true king and his kingdom. And so these are examples and, examples and glimpses of God's attempt with the Israelite people, his chosen people under their covenant to establish his kingdom. But unfortunately, they, are, uh, they reject him. So do you find yourself putting faith in tangible things? I'll ask you that today. Why can't it be so hard to put our faith in what is unseen? Our relationship with the Father has to be first if true obedience will be established. With humility, we submit to His authority by faith and align our lives in the right order under a faithful King. That's how the kingdom is advanced. 